watch them clock in now. At Easter, when it was all, the technology was all new to us, so we had 12 students to do five minute presentations. It took us half a day just trying to get them in there. Yeah, just, yeah, know, yeah. But that's, that's why you've got to do it, isn't yes. it? You know, because otherwise they do that for real. Yes, good morning, folks. Good morning. It's nice to see you clocking in. We've got all sorts here. Um, so um, I'm going to just turn this back round and let you see who's here. There's Tim and the stones. They are good at waving. You're so used to this now, aren't you? <laughs> Let's tip you up a bit so that you can see everyone else as well. So you can see, despite having the heating on, everyone is still sitting in their coats and they look muffled because of their masks, but it's just lovely to see everyone. So folk are gathering, as are you, which is just lovely. And um, morning, Betty, morning, Jan. Who else can I see? There are some people I recognise and I can't remember your names. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to let you uh, enjoy their company while I go and finish sorting out and then we'll start the service. The preaching from here. Microphone's there. What else do I need? Do I stop? Do I start? Do I stop? One verse would be nice. Go on. So friends online, great to see you arriving. There's a great line and string of you across the top of my screen. It's lovely to have you here. As you can see, Belton Church is quite full, but with lots of gaps. It's one of those really weird... Um, Things that I don't think I'm ever going to get used to. 
I, I long for the day when it won't be so. Right, so let's make a start. Good morning, everybody. Morning. It's lovely to see you. Those who are on the edge, I'm afraid you're beyond the bounds of heating. So... <laughs> Margaret's putting her gloves back on. <laughs> but if you get really cold, please just feel free to come and stand somewhere where you're still suitably distanced, but allows you to uh, not have feet like blocks of ice. Great to welcome everybody online as well for this, our third Sunday in Advent. And we're going to light our Advent candle in a minute. We'll light three of the four of them. But before we do that, we're going to just settle into worship with the opening words that we have on our order of service for Holy Communion and Advent. And we'll say this first, have our first carol. And you should have a copy of the words that we're going to use, not so that you can sing them, but just so that you have more than the first line and a half. Some of us are not very good at remembering all the words, are we? So it just gives us something of the story and those of you online um, I'm conscious that Loretta is putting the words up for you as well so you can sing you're allowed to one of the perks of being at home so would you like to stand for this actually standing together in the presence of God the gathered community of faith grace mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you and as we stand, we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Do be seated. And we have part of the story, the Christmas story, in our first carol, Once in Royal David City. So we're going to light our Advent ring. Always a sign of hope. I just wonder if there's anyone here today who'd like to light those candles. We have got some steps. If <laughs> the person who volunteers is short. But is there anyone who would, on behalf of all of us, like to light the ring? Jake, yes! Come up to the front. really important isn't there about hope lighting hope and sustaining hope and gratitude i'm going to give you this rather than a box of matches we need three lips 
feel free to clamber up the ladders. And as Jake does that, I'm going to say a prayer that, for me, is essential to say with this. Today we light our Advent ring, knowing that all God's people around the world are watching and waiting for the promises of God to be completed. We do not yet have peace on earth. And so far the suffering of the poor has not ended. And yet we celebrate because we, along with many others, are people of faith who refuse to give up hope. And that kind of hope, rooted in God, is stronger than anything else in the world. Amen. So with that sense of hope, here's a chance for us to just get ourselves straight with God. The bottom of page one. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness. And he will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord, our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who loves the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, on the inside of your new sheet, at the top of the second page, there is a prayer that we're going to say together. It's called the Collect. Collects together the themes of our readings, which we'll hear shortly. So we say together... God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right, with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, Jackie and Roger are going to read our Bible readings, and you can follow those on your new sheet. is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please do stand for our gospel reading. (coughs) Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. From John chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and then 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light 
but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one who you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Would you like to sit down? And before Tim comes and preaches with us as we sit together with God's words. We're going to hear our second carol, which of course you're not humming along to, are you? (laughs) I think as long as you keep your breathing steady, that's okay. In the bleak midwinter. to have the mask off and not be steaming up all the time. I could actually see for a moment there are people out there. <laughs> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Have you ever witnessed anything special or momentous? People have often said that they can remember exactly what they were doing or where they were when they heard some important news. For example, and please don't answer this out loud, how many of you remember the first of the moon landings? Something that seems incredible, miraculous even, when you think that the first powered flight had only occurred about 60 years earlier. 
My brother says he remembers clearly being allowed to sit up and watch it. Funnily enough, I don't, although I suspect, being aged one, I was probably a major contribution to everybody being up that night. <laughs> What's interesting, though, is that the same event looks different to different people viewing it from different angles. One of the many reasons I love living in Kegworth is our proximity to Don Donington Park. And one of the real highlights of the year for me is to at attend the historic racing festival with my brothers and my close friends. At last year's festival, an accident happened that even now has me doubting my eyes and my memory. A car swerved, skidded, and rolled over right in front of me. Or at least, so I thought. Don't worry, the driver was completely unharmed. If anything, she just seemed to be annoyed at the ignominious end to her race. No, the strange thing is that even though the accident happened right in front of my eyes, what I remember seeing differs significantly from what my brothers remember seeing. I'm convinced that the car skidded one way and then the other and then finally rolled right over so that it landed back on its wheels. On the other hand, my brothers are adamant that the car fell onto its side but then, did, then landed back on its wheels without rolling right over. Who's right? Me or them? There's only one of me, but two of them. On the other hand, it happened right in front of me, whilst they were a few hundred yards away. I suppose that without the motor racing equivalent of the VAR, we will never know, and my brothers and I are going to have to do, agree to disagree. Nevertheless, I can't quite let go of what I saw, or at least what I think I saw. But my brothers are not liars, and there were two of them, and only one of me. We wouldn't be much help to the police as witnesses, would we? But witnesses are important, even if they're imperfect. And they can still others who weren't there still tell others who weren't there what they saw, what they experienced, and what they felt. In today's gospel, we hear of one very important witness for Jesus, John the Baptist. His testimony to the Jewish people, telling them that Jesus was the promised Messiah, was essential. Nevertheless, although John's role as a witness was hugely important, he was not the promised Messiah, even though some of his disciples were adamant that he was. And so we have this very deliberate statement in St. John the Evangelist's Gospel that John the Baptist was a witness to the Messiah, but was not the Messiah himself. Indeed, we hear John, the Baptist, himself deny that he was the Messiah in the Gospel reading. Rather, it was John, the Baptist's role to provide the link between the prophecies of Jewish scripture, our Old Testament, and Jesus. He was to testify that Jesus was the Messiah, the chosen one of God, the Saviour, for whom they were all waiting, for whom we are all waiting. Here in John, the evangelist's gospel, he quotes Isaiah saying, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. And he tells the Jews that the one to follow him will be so special that he is not even worthy to untie his sandals, the most menial task given only to slaves. Through the gospels, we hear of other witnesses to the birth of Jesus. They tell of his holiness his royal lineage, and his humble beginnings. The angel tells Mary, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. Later, the angel witnesses to the shepherds, I'm bringing you great news of good joy, good news of great joy to all the people. The shepherds themselves, who went to Bethlehem, with haste, the Gospels say, witnessed the humble beginnings of Jesus when they found the child lying in a manger. Meanwhile, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? And they found him in a stable in Bethlehem. Different people, different views, different witnesses of the same event. Glorious Son of God, 
weak and defenseless baby, mighty king. Different witnesses, different views of the same child. But that was 2,000 years ago, and we are his witnesses now. We are the shepherds now, telling people how the angels spoke to us, how we found a weak and defenseless baby in a humble manger, come to save the world from sin. We are the kings now, telling people how we followed a star and found a king born to rule God's kingdom. We are Jesus' witnesses now, telling people that God loves them, loves them enough to send his only son, and that there is a better way than selfishness, division, and hatred. Each of us has a different angle to take, and a different gift for telling, some by words, some by deeds. Yet each of our experience of God is still important, and can still touch someone else, if we will let it. And finally, a short joke for Christmas. After the Advent, Advent church service, eight-year-old Lee said to the preacher, when I grow up, I'm going to give you some money. Well, thank you, said the preacher. But why? Because my father says that you're one of the poorest preachers we've ever had. <laughs> Amen. Oh my goodness! <laughs> We're going to stand and affirm our faith in a moment. Thank you, Tim. We won't be giving you any money afterwards. <laughs> Maybe that is... Is that a sign of our appreciation of your preaching? How does that work? Um, I, it occurred to me, as I sat back there, that actually Cara and Sandy and Margaret and Jenny, you could sit in that area there and be in heating, under heaters. Can I invite you to just make your way up? There's space for four of you up there. You will just be a lot more comfortable up there than you probably are where you are. So as they move, the rest of us are going to stand and affirm our faith. So the words in the middle of page two. And as we say this, can I invite us to say we believe rather than I believe? And just watch out for that one line near the bottom, which we don't say together, but we say most of it. So with those who are at home as well, we say, we believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature died for us and rose again. We believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Do sit down once again. <clears throat> And we are going to pray now for situations beyond ourselves. And I'm going to use just a few of the phrases that were there in our 1 Thessalonians reading. So if you find it helpful to be able to see the words and to mull them as, as we pray, then please do have that open with you. Rejoice always. Where's that joy in your people, Lord? Normally we would be showing it with gusty singing and warm conversations over refreshments, with closeness and laughter and tactile compassion. So we have to dig differently to find our joy in you today. And today we dig. We dig now as we sit on pews and sofas and dining room chairs. Holy Spirit, help us to be people of joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances. 
We give thanks, Lord, that you are present in the struggles of our society at the moment. We've learned that, those of us who've met daily for morning prayer and worked our way through the Psalms, we know that mix of agony and of trusting and of giving thanks and praise. So, Holy Spirit, help us as we test the many voices that we hear in our society. We pray for those who witness to the light as they live and work in developing countries to meet need, to enable health, to give them a voice and the right to flourish. Lord, we pray for those who witness to the light. Give them integrity in the use of their funds, in, their lo in the love that they carry in their work with people and in their celebrations this Christmas time. We pray for those who carry the light of Christ into their place of work. Equip them with grace and responsibility and an understanding of your truth in their situations, even under great pressure. We pray for those who feel they have nothing to give, no one to shine light to, nothing to offer. Lord, with great love, open their eyes to understand what they can be in the place where they are. And, oh God, we pray for government, our government, and for the tangle of Brexit deals, climate change, COVID, be present, O oh God, not absent in the corridors and meetings of power. Shine your light into difficult places. And with your long view, guide this nation into ways of justice and of peace. Lord, in your mercy, give thanks in all circumstances. Lord, we let thanks seep into our spirit, into our hearts, into our heads. For as Paul reminds us in this letter, the one who calls us is faithful and he will do it. So we gather our prayers together and we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to suggest that you remain sitting for the piece today, simply because it's easier for those who are looking online. Otherwise, I just get a wall of the front people, and that's it. And they can see you much better that way. And that matters, doesn't it? So, we turn to the words at the very bottom of page two on our service sheet. May the God of peace bring you, make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Shall we turn round at least and wave and uh, can't do much else really. You can whisper to the person nearest to you, peace be with you if you wish.
as waves all round. I hate this silence. I so hate this silence. Yeah, Val is going to change that for us. So our next uh, carol is Angels from the Realms of Glory. And Loretta has written while she put the comments up on the screen. Oh, I've lost it now. Beautiful carol next. Very tricky to hit the high notes. (laughs) That's not our problem today, is it? So our attention turns to this place and this meal, where all are welcome. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, and by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. So lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. I hasn't heard, nor ear seen. Oh no, I hasn't seen, <laughs> nor ear heard, nor tongue told of a glory like yours, Lord God. For you are our God, and we are your people. In your great goodness, you made a covenant between us and gave us your laws for holy living. Though we were not faithful to you, though we were exiled and estranged, you didn't abandon or reject us. In Jesus, you met us to transform our brokenness. In his crucifixion, you knew the depths of our alienation. Yet in his resurrection, you see our hearts in the darkness can never be distinguished. And the way So we gladly thank you, joining with the company of angels and archangels and all the hosts of heaven in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Ever-present God, your prophets longed that you would tear the heavens and come down. And in your Son you have come down and filled the earth with the splendour of your dwelling among us. In him you were present to friend and stranger, the intrigued and the suspicious, the betrayer and the bereft. Now be present to us, we pray, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, 
Let this bread and this wine be for us the body and blood of Christ, who at supper with his friends took the bread and gave you thanks. And then he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Word of life, though heaven and earth will pass away, your words will never pass away. As you feed us with this living bread, take the those who wonder if they can survive this day, restore any who are down and heavy laden, visit those who are forsaken and alone. Open of the window of your heaven, Lord, that the church may glimpse the hope of glory. And the world may be transfigured by the light of your truth until that day when heaven finally comes to earth, when your Son returns and your Spirit infuses your creation with resurrection grace, and you are in all, one God, now and forever. Amen. body of Christ, broken for us all. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for us all. Amen. Ed and Karen will uh, steward you to come and receive, and we'll receive from the front here, but I'm going to start with those who are warming up in the chapel, or not in the chapel, in the chancel rather. <coughs>
plaît. spot the carols in the great medley that uh, Val has given us, which uh, is still out for. Thank you. So on your new sheet, there's a post-communion prayer, which we're going to say together, and then our final blessing as we prepare to leave this place of worship, this place being... Uh, pockets of place all over the place, really, isn't it? But our gathered community. So we pray together. We give thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of your spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. So may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself, the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service, and the joy of the Lord Jesus set his song in your heart, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace and love to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And our final carol, a bit calypso -y. Just think warmth and palm trees and, you know, all those tropical things that make you, uh, yeah, yeah, just get in the mood of this calypso. Off you go. <laughs>
round of applause today, goodness. So thank you everybody. Thanks to some of our Belton folk. Oh, there's our crib. I should have paid attention to that, shouldn't I, before I left. So the ubiquitous knitting crib. There we go. Well, friends, it's been really good to have you with us. Ed, who was at his most welcoming at the start of the service, is now going back to be a doll keeper. These are our advent windows. You can only see one of them at the moment. And uh, this is due to go up and uh, be part of the advent windows in Belton. So it's a little town of Bethlehem. Let me just show you this one as well. The digitalness on this camera is hopeless because it just adjusts to the light and you lose all the colour. So I'm going to go outside, which is quite a brave thing to do in this weather. I will come back in if it's raining, but if it's not raining, then I'm going to be out here. Oh, it's a bit breezy. And as you can see, incredibly grey. It's not raining, actually, but it's not the most pleasant of... Uh, <laughs> okay, then, bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Are you here for Christmas in the you. end? Yeah. Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Lovely window. I really okay, enjoyed that. It was really yeah. cool. Bye-bye both. Bye. <laughs> it's not great, really, is it? Bye-bye, Beryl. So, yeah, it's starting to rain. I may uh, return to inside. It's really quite unpleasant out here. And uh, you'll see people better, actually, on the inside. But I'll just let David and Pat come out first. Bye-bye. Back to Windy Corner. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's good to see you both. Hello, Anne. Thank you. Yes, Take thank care. you. It's good to see you both. Thank How's you. life? Is it mad? <laughs> yes, what happened? Oh, some, some doctor I know tried to saw it off. <laughs> no! I'll put it back together again. <laughs> Bye, Sandy. Right, I'm coming back inside. It's really horrible out So here's Jane catching yeah, up on yeah. long rotten stuff by the looks of things. Okay, I'll, I'll, do you want to rub it on? Various folk in that direction. Thank you for your readings. It was great to have you involved. Yeah. It's such a passive experience, really, coming to church at the moment, isn't it? You know, it's, there are so many things we're not doing. It's, it's nice to be able to give folk things to do. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. What's happening for Christmas for you? Are you around? We, we have the, we're going to be part of a three family bubble. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Good. So that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be different no matter what, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, love, I love the, the um, light. It's good, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's good. Yeah. It's yes. people. Yeah, it's really lovely. Yeah. Thank you very much, please. You're welcome. Are you okay? Yes, thank you. Are busy? You? busy? Yeah, as always, really. As you're saying to Tim, I don't know why there isn't more that time in lockdown. There ought to be, oughtn't yeah. there? Mind you, animals are no forgivers of time, really. No. They will always keep you busy, won't they? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Tim, very much. <laughs> The dogs have really been a lifesaver because they've kept us on a routine. You've got to take them Yes. Out. Yeah, that is good, actually. And you do need something like that, don't you, to make it happen. Yes. Yeah.
the native yeah. So that quite happy. Yeah. Bounce around as normal. <laughs> so Rob is recovering as he should. Yes, yeah, he says he's still feeling a lot more tired than he thought he would. I mean, the wounds still hurt. Yeah. But, um, he's on the mend. He's a lot yeah, less good. pain than he was on Oh, Tuesday gosh, night. yes. Yes, yes, definitely. He's on the mend, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So you're having a quiet Christmas. Are you around here? Or are you? Yes, yes. So we're just doing Christmas Day ourselves. I yeah. think we're going to have lots of times on with pots and games. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, yes. Yeah, so it's going to be so different for everyone, isn't it? Yeah. This is it. I think and my dad and my younger brother are going to go and see my sister, so that would be nice for them. Okay. Have something to do with. Yeah. My oldest brother, I'm not sure about because he's stuck on his own. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. wants to do anything about it. Yeah. Ask the question. See what you get. <laughs> <laughs> you can yeah. have a nice quiet day in once. No, we've got two carol services this afternoon, and I'm interring some ashes at 2.30. So. Busy day still. Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, normally at this time of year it would be busy day every day with school staff and carol services everywhere and so on so Take yeah care of i will i will thank you tim very much bye 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 see you soon you're welcome well friends i'm going to clock off now and um say farewell and go and pack away and get ready oh, yeah. for the next yeah, thing. Yeah, Thank you for your that. involvement. It's been really good to have you as part of what we're doing today and a part of our worship. God bless this week as you prepare for Christmas. We feel like we've turned the corner, don't we, from Advent into attending to Christmas. And um, yeah, rightly so, rightly so, really. So go well, God bless. And with some of you, certainly we'll be meeting up for morning prayer. All are welcome to do that at 8.30 tomorrow. And then next Sunday morning, this is something I need to say. Ed, you, what, we're not at you next Sunday morning, are we? Are we no. at Haven? <laughs> oh, it's probably on the news sheet, yeah, actually. It's, it's the week after, it's Sunday after Christmas. Really. Yeah, OK. So next week, if you plan to come to the 10.30, which we you think we're at Haven, but check with your news sheet, then... Um, yeah, let Loretta know. She's the one who needs to know for that. So, bye for now, everybody. Go well.